Good morning, Radhika. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Ro, how are you doing? <sighs> Surviving in Nairobi. Welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Elephant in the Room podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about your relationship with money, how to attract money, how to understand money, and most importantly, deal with money. And also to keep money. How do we keep money? There's a famous saying yeah. that earning money is easy, but keeping it is harder. Do you know who said this? No. <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> no, Radhika 2022. Radhika yeah. 2022. No, I wouldn't claim it, but I've definitely yeah. heard it before. Um, and actually, in reality, that's the truth. So you'll see a lot of families, um, generational wealth, and the you know the parents who are who came in the nineties, sixties, and seventies start businesses, right. especially in Kenya, actually, okay. and they have a good relationship with money. Um, and then, as the kids, of course, they don't have they don't see the struggles, and they don't really understand money because we're not taught about money at school. Yeah. And as that family grows, the spending, of course, consumes them. Right. And before you know it, is they're back to where they started. And I actually feel that's a, almost like a vicious circle of life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's almost like God teaching you a lesson. Like, okay, you, your family struggled, you did really well. Oh, you're misbehaving on money. Back you go to, it's like snakes and ladders. Yeah. Down you go, back <laughs> to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. You're like number 98 about to complete your swallow down to number seven. Yeah, yeah. because you're, you're misbehaving with money. <laughs> I mean, what you're saying actually ties in with something I think I had from, um, I think it was a late Sheikh Maktoum out of, out of the UAE. Okay. He would say the same thing. Like, you'll find one Sheikh who works really hard to build a kingdom, yeah. right? Makes it super, super wealthy. Yeah. Everything is great. Uh, then the princes come in. They're like, oh, this is amazing. So they start buying Learjets, you know, troubling, buying clubs around the world. Yeah. Uh, but then they spend all the cash that the father spent uh, time actually accumulating. Mm. Then when they take over, the kingdom has nothing, right? So they actually reset. It ties into actually what you yeah. what you said in your own way. And to be honest, yeah. it's uh, it's prevalent across every culture, okay, every region, uh, every income class. It just is what it is. And I think the crux of it is that we're just not taught about the relationship with money we're not taught how to nurture it yeah. grow it and we're not saying don't have fun and don't live your life if you work hard it's good to play hard yeah but there's smarter ways of you doing that and being able to making sure that you're creating generational wealth okay. and i guess that's what we'll talk about today generational wealth yeah wow <laughs> sounds long term brad I, I i think i'll bring it into my immediate my immediate issue and then we we go generations <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> so for the first time ever i bought a heater right? so i've nice. plugged in in fact i have two heaters one in the living room one in the master you know yeah. life is great i can walk in it's all warm okay uh, but at the end of the month, I'm um, looking at my electricity bill. Uh, uh, it's amazing, you know. I shouldn't laugh, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Oh, these, these are huge numbers, you yes. know. Like, okay, these are huge shifts in, in my expenses. Uh, but my income is still the same, you know. There's a certain income I'm earning every month. I know what I'm actually spending, but now electricity has gone through the roof. Right? And how, what percentage do you think it's gone through the roof? Aye, it must be like 55%. I'm a math what? guy. Yeah. So I'm looking at it like, Aye, you am I making off shoes? You better turn heater. <laughs> <laughs> but I need the heat in the house though. No, of course. You know? of course. Yeah. It's a necessity. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. Yes. And actually the, the real thing is that, you know, right now in, inflation is quite high across the world. So what's led to your electricity prices going up are yeah. several things. Firstly, um, there's the war that no one had predicted between oh. Russia and Ukraine. Right. And that's having different types of effects on what's happening out in the world, right? So there was a d oil delay. Right. As a result of that, that's knocked into emerging markets. We import a lot of oil. Okay. Um, oil fuels manufacturing, our cars day to day as we right. travel, lots of industries. Yeah. And the price of that's gone up. As a result of that, some way, that increase in price has led to an increase in your electricity. And this is called inflation. But there's something in there you mentioned. You said emerging markets. What's an emerging market? Oh, wonderful. So emerging market, well, you know what an emerging market is? I have no idea. No, I'm joking. Um, so an emerging <laughs> market is a region that yet hasn't been seen by global standards to be a developed world. So examples of developed world are UK, US, Australia. Um, and then emerging markets are areas where we still have significant amounts of poverty. Um, you know, infrastructure is not fully developed okay. and the industries haven't been 
uh, made efficient. So you know, farming is not efficient. You have multiple cartels. Okay. Um, so companies like Twiga Foods are actually trying to solve for that. Um, and the idea is to put more dollars back into the low income individuals. Right. So yeah. emerging market means that these countries are working towards becoming a developed country. They are m- emerging into development. Correct. And All so right. Africa is emerging All into right. development. All right. Sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet. Now let's bring it back home. Okay. My problems with electricity. I have fixed income. Rads, how do I deal with this? Do you know what? I'm yeah. not going to lie. It's a really tough, tough time. But what we need to do is learn how to manage our money. Okay. And so the simple thing is known as budgeting. Okay. And I'll take you through a few steps of right. how you go about looking at your income. So income is essentially what you earn on a monthly basis. So first thing is your salary. So most okay. of us go to go to work. We do nine to five. We get paid a salary at the end of the month. Right. But some of us, and Kenyans especially, love to have side hustles and I'm so proud of Kenya right. because I think that is the best way to think about generating more income. So you know on the side uh, for example Ro does some consulting so for a project you'll get some more money uh, uh, in the month Okay. and so it's everything so whether you do cattle farming, um, you d- drive an Uber in your spare time, you coach kids to do tennis, whatever it might be yeah. that is seen as your total monthly income every single shilling you bring in okay. every single month. Okay. Um, but that's great so we know what we're earning. but do we really understand what we're spending? So um, things that are coming in, including your monthly income, are known as assets. Um, but assets are a little bit wider spread, so not mm-hmm. just your income, but you know maybe if you own land, okay. uh, if you own an investment portfolio with stocks and shares, right. uh, bonds. So your total positive things that generate income are seen as assets. All right. But the, the real value is how do you understand your expenses? So every single month we have all this money coming in, you're like first day of the month, you're like, whoa, I'm super rich. Yeah. And then very quickly you're like, oh man, I'm running out of money. Those things are called expensive, all your outgoings. Right. My honestly, my honest advice is that when it comes to expenses, you and I will think 10 times bis- before spending 10,000 shillings. Right, yes. Uh, 50,000 shillings in one sitting. But the real expenses that really drive a hole in your pocket are the small expenses. So let me take an example. Okay. Before I got wise, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, I was I was getting my nails done, being a female, every two weeks. Okay. And, you know, I get a mani, pe- mani and pedi and that cost me around 3,000 shillings without yeah. thinking of it. And every two weeks I was, you know, paying 3,000 shillings mm-hmm. until I had a son and I was like, I need to look at my expenses. Yeah. And actually I realized a small change of actually getting my nails done every three weeks rather than two weeks yeah. saves me 3,000 shillings. Um, and with that 3,000 shillings, it might feel like it's only 3,000 shillings, but that habit, mm-hmm. so what I've done with that 3,000 shillings, I've opened an account with Dovu and I've started investing on behalf of my son. And um, with that, every that 3,000 shillings is earning interest. Yes. Over a 15 year period, that could make a difference of 3 million shillings. So today that small habit of 3,000 shillings feels like a lot. Yeah. And I know Ro, you love to eat out, right? So how many times do you eat out in a week? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Ro, not Talking about how chunky I am. <laughs> no, never. I don't know. You know that. Well, I'm the ultimate corner, so I enjoy, I enjoy my food. Yeah, uh, t- so Tingling, do I. teasing my palate. Indeed. Um, I mean, before before COVID, if we talk 2019, I think I used to eat out like thrice a week. Okay. So it was really standard. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. All right. Uh, then COVID comes in. Uh, Italy is a shutdown. Okay. Yeah. So a change is forced upon me. But then I am indoors. I have time to myself and I think, hmm, I've always thought about whipping up a nice dish. Yeah. Right? So I start cooking. How does this translate into the deeper question that you've asked me uh, this lovely day? I'm not spending as much as I was before. Exactly. Okay? And so imagine, Ro, yeah. so before you were doing that, let's say three times a week. Yes. Now you've so reduced... So like 50,000 bob. Yeah. So now you've yeah. reduced it by how, how many... <sighs> I think nowadays I even do Subway. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me say I've really slashed it by 99%. That's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's my man. Yeah. yeah. So I think I've saved, let's say, 49,000 shillings. Yeah. Let's yeah. Per the, week. Per week. Yeah. Per week. Imagine your stops going out, eating 16,000 shillings every single month. You invested over a period of five to seven years' time. Okay. You could, that converts to a 1.6 million shilling. Ching ching In- investment. Yeah. yeah. So it's small behavior. So the point I'm making here yeah. is we know what we're earning. Woohoo. We need to find ways to increase that. 
Mm -hmm. And all about financial planning is holistic. So the way you earn affects your career decisions. It affects how you spend. It affects the financial goals you achieve. And I'll take you through it. But the first step is we know what we're um, Um, earning. Yes. Now we're looking at our expenses over a three month period and seeing, okay, where can I reduce unnecessary spending? Right. You know, if I'm doing sports betting betting of 200 shillings, oh, wow, I won once a thousand bob. But I'm doing that every single week. Maybe I shouldn't do do that and actually invest that All right. or put it to better use of improving my skill set, mm-hmm. you know, learning a new skill so I can generate a, a new business, a start a new business yeah, and absolutely. make more money. Yeah. So the idea is like, let's take uh, 30 minutes out of your weekend and go through your M-Pesa statement, go through your bank statement and say, whoa, this is how much I've spent. Yeah. And then see how do you offset it? So, Ro, it's incredible that you've already identified that your ex- electricity bill has gone up. That's because you understand your incomings and your outgoings and i can guarantee majority of the population don't know that okay even yeah. like really successful businessmen yeah uh there's all this money coming in and out but they just know their PL. they don't really understand where is the additional loss going mm-hmm. and so they're successful businesses but should a pandemic happen which happened yes so many businesses shut down because they didn't have a good understanding of money and they didn't have a good relationship with money all right so the first step is always to understand what are your incomings and outgoings which i've explained okay and then the next thing is to really sit down and say, okay, what are my financial goals? So, Ro, tell me, um, for the, give me a three-year, five-year, and a long-term financial goal. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'll start with the one-year before you go to the, to the three-year. So, I started a one-year goal last year, and this was to go to the Qatar World Cup. All right? Wonderful. Yeah, so we channeled money into that. Uh, I've been putting it into global stocks, actually. Uh, yes, there's been a slight dip recently, but yes. So the one year I'm about to hit my target. World Cup is in is in December. Yes, so I it think is. I'm going to achieve that one. Woohoo! All right. Okay, I better write that down as annual leave. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'm off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't call me. I don't want to hear from you guys. <laughs> what I'm is a cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, looking at um, the three year side, yes. right? I am thinking of purchasing a lovely, lovely piece of property. Okay. Uh, just near Mount Kenya. Right? Wonderful. I thrive in cold climates. Yes. Right. So I'm putting money aside for that uh, because I want to build my my family home outside outside Nairobi. Wonderful. All right. Uh, if you look at uh, five years, uh, the five year one is really my my base for for my retirement. I'm starting to think about this really early. Right. Smart. I'm staging it. So. Five year. I'm gonna do it in five year cycles. So building for the first pseudo retirement in five years, yep. creating a portfolio for that. Once I have this chunk of money in five, I'm gonna use it as a quote unquote a deposit for my next plan for the next five years. Yeah. So really, the five year question for me turns out to be more of a twenty twenty year uh, a plan. Okay. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'd just like to dig a little deeper in sure. terms of so. Now you've already started thinking about a financial plan. So okay. simply put, a financial plan is a plan that okay. helps you achieve your financial goals. Okay. You've clearly done a lot of thinking around it. And that simply means let's identify what we want to achieve in a uh, short term, one year, three year and longer term, which right. can be five years and above. Okay. And most common goals are things that you mentioned. Some things I can add there is a children's education, yeah. um, retirement fund, which we're thinking about, but in a different way, yeah. uh, travel fund, paying for an MBA. Okay. It can be anything. Yes. But the reality is that we have a lot of wants. Yes. And so you need to prioritize what your wants uh, are, and yeah. I would pick two or three to begin with. Okay. So I'm gonna use your example of buying this beautiful piece of land um, mm-hmm. or property yeah. near Mount Kenya. Yeah. So your goal is three years, and how much roughly do you think uh, this property would cost you? Uh, so it's a nice parcel. The agreement I have is nine million bob. Nine million shillings at the yeah. outset feels like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get there. Yeah. But actually, we have created a really neat tool on Dovu. So if you go on there and you type in, I'd like to create a goal, or click on, I'd like to uh, create a goal. Right. There is a tool that allows you to understand how much you need to save Mm -hmm. on a monthly basis in order to hit your 9 million shilling target. Okay. And it actually breaks it down significantly and you can change the amounts on a monthly basis as well as the timeframe to actually come back and say, okay, I actually only need to save 
45,000 shillings. This is an example. I don't have the tool yeah, in front okay. of me. Yeah, yeah. But 45,000 shillings going forward for the next three years and I'll hit my target. Because you're not just saving that money in a bank account. You're actually making it work for you. So that goal is earning money. So when, when you say work for you, yes. um, where is this cash actually going? What, what's happening with this cash? So I'm putting it aside and then... And then what's happening. Yeah, no. So, yeah. so <laughs> good question. Yeah. So... On Dovu, the goal-based investing allows you to put money away. Okay. And so you as an individual row doesn't have to worry about what investment do I pick? I don't know anything about the stock market. What do I do? Yeah. It's more, okay, leave it to the experts. Mm -hmm. And based on your risk level, which could be conservative, balanced, or aggressive, we spoke about it in episodes earlier, we will do the investing on behalf of you and okay. we'll do it in a risk-adjusted way, keeping our risks low, allowing you to achieve your return. Right. So you leave it to us. So we take all the heavy lifting out of it so all you need to do is build a skill of in, of saving and investing regularly. Um, right. But the thing about the financial goal yeah. is that in order for you to be able to save towards something, you need to know what you're doing, right? You need to know what you're saving for. Right. And so the second step is, okay, once I understand my expenses, mm -hmm. let me go and think about what are the three most priority things I want to achieve in short term, medium term and long term. Okay. Then you log on. We're not telling you to invest. Just go have a play around with the tool. It'll give you a bit a better understanding of how you should be looking to put a little amounts away to your each of your goals. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then I guess everyone's like, okay, this is really great. I have my goals, but is there anything else I can help you with? And of course. So when you're creating a financial plan, mm -hmm. we like to see it in three buckets. Okay. So firstly, you need to have an emergency fund. So, you know, Ro, recently um, a friend of yours fell ill and, you know, there was a Haram Beta, yeah. you know, put money together so we can help them. These are things we have to do. And so, you know, your emergency fund, simply put, is a fund that you can draw upon. So take cash out of okay. when an emergency hits, i.e. You lose your job, your friend or family falls ill and you need to pay for health care. Yeah. Um, you accidentally hit your car and now you have to get it fixed. Things happen. Things yes. happen. Yeah, Life yeah. happens. Excess. Excess. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, an yeah. emergency fund is exactly for that. So you would save three months of your runway. Okay. which is basically not your luxurious lifestyle of eating out three times a week. Yeah. It's very much your expenses, like your electricity bill, um, you know, normal necessities. Okay. And you put it in an easily accessible fund. All right. Because again, you don't want to sitting in a bank account unless it's a high savings bank account or a fixed deposit yeah. because inflation is so high. So if you're just leaving money in an account, it's not actually making anything. It's losing money. Losing value, yeah. So okay. I'd recommend, you know, have a look around on the money market funds we have on Dovu and go and put your, your emergency fund into that. Um, so now that you've decided that you're going to create a financial plan. Right. The rule of thumb is that you should be saving 25% of your income. Okay. I know that's a really high number, but let's say you're earning 100,000 shillings a month. Mm -hmm. You should look to save 25,000 shillings. Okay. And I know you're going to say, my electricity bill is so high. How am I going to do that? <laughs> yeah. Look, that's just a baseline. Whether you're doing 20, 18%, the point is you're getting started yes. and it goes back to you have to build discipline. So, yeah, the point being is let's get started today. All right. Whatever you can save. OK. But then what do you do with that 25,000 shillings? How do you break it up? I've spoken to you about the emergency fund. The okay. second fund is a long term investing fund where Dovu fits in nicely and we help you invest for the long term. Right. And the second one is known the opportunistic fund. Opportunistic. Yes. Yes. There's an opportunity in there. Okay. Exactly. So right. this opportunistic fund yeah. is, you know, I speak to a lot of customers of ours and some of them are like, I have all my savings in crypto. Oh, oh my God. My, my skin starts burning up. I'm like, no. <laughs> what do you no! mean? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? You have it all? Yeah. Cryptocurrency is very risky. So that's an yeah. example of opportunistic investment. Right. But why do you have your life savings in crypto? So a lot of people, a lot of Kenyans actually invested in crypto last year, same time this year. So that would be uh, August 2021. Yeah. Crypto was at its peak. And yeah. now if you look at it, it's like sub $30,000 because there was a hype. Like people, all this money flew in and everyone was like, yeah, crypto has some real value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet no one knows what's going on. Social media didn't help. We had random social media people on Clubhouse, Twitter. Everyone is an expert. Expert telling yeah. you that you should invest in crypto. And a lot of Kenyans held 100%. So as a financial advisor, that gives me nightmares. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so that's, yeah. an, that's an example of opportunistic, right? We're not saying yeah. don't invest in investments like that. I'm not yeah. saying that. I'm saying that's great, but let's limit how much of your 
assets, how much mm-hmm. of your investment portfolio goes into that? So on a side thing, Rads, I am obsessed with 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 art, okay. right? Africana, yeah. we call it, yeah. Uh, we identify young artists, we, we buy their pieces, and the idea is to hold it till the value increases. Okay. So does this qualify under opportunistic or what will you actually place? So I would put that under opportunistic okay. because the risk you're taking in believing that yeah. this art piece is going to be worth something significantly more than what you put in yeah. is high. Okay. And it's illiquid. That's so yeah. the reality is that if you needed the money because there's a huge emergency, you're going to be selling at a discount. Again, selling at a discount means you're going you're likely to be a selling it at a much cheaper value because you just need to get rid of it uh-huh. than okay. you put in. Yeah. Or you won't be able to sell it. So the risk overall for this type of investing is quite high. Okay. So NFTs is another example. Can you please explain? It's called a non fungible token. token. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, these are all the craze, like lots of even L'Oreal, De Beers, other companies are trying to look at for new ways to actually implement it and sell products. Yeah. Adidas did a, uh, a, a sale of their trainer as an NFT. And yes. again, it wasn't successful, but it's done on blockchain. So it's you can't reverse it. Like it's in written in history now. Yeah. But no one understands it. Again, that is high risk opportunistic. Okay. And another thing is also buying individual stocks. So that's got a little bit more um, historic performance behind it. Yeah. We don't say don't do it, but you should limit that portfolio to 25% of your overall savings portfolio. So let's say you're investing and saving 25% of your income. Okay. The high risk should be 25%. Your emergency should be 5%. And the remaining um, of 70 should be your long-term savings. Okay. Okay. And the reason being is because you don't want to have all your eggs in a risky basket like crypto. Because my friends who've invested in crypto are crying. Stress. And they're yeah. messaging me like, what do I do? I'm like, listen, if you don't need the money, just hold. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't need, but don't put any more money into it. Yes. Um, because yeah. honestly, we just don't know the use case of it going forward. Okay. Okay. So w- I'm not saying don't do individual stock buying. And I'll explain why when I talk about long term. But let's mm-hmm. limit it to 25% of your portfolio. Okay. Okay. Like I, I mean, I come from a fa- finance background. I have a little bit more. So again, these buckets of like the ranges are dependent on how much you understand. Yeah. Uh, so mine's a little bit more, but I'm okay. And I understand the risk I'm taking. And the last thing is when mm-hmm. someone tells you, yeah, you're going to make a quick buck. Guess what? You're losing your money. So if it's a, sc- a scam, get rich quick. There is no such thing. Yeah. That's why we need a financial plan. Okay. Now, I would like to take you back to the emergency fund yes. that we spoke about. And I told you about my friend who's been ill and the, the, the Harambe, the contributions that we did yeah. uh, together. What are your thoughts around insurance? Uh, <laughs> where does question. insurance fall in? I mean... In this yeah. School. yeah. Yeah. So insurance is very important. Um, I think um, the first step, actually, of your financial plan before you even think about investing in saving. Yeah. Uh, sorry, before you even think about investing, especially into the high risk or or. So your emergency plan and your insurance go hand in hand. You should be building those together. Okay. They're cousins. They're yeah. cousins, yeah. Right. Those have to be built simultaneously. When you take out an insurance plan, they should be twofold. If okay. you have a family, always take out life insurance. Life insurance simply means that if something happened to Radhika today, all the monthly payments you're paying will accumulate and they'll invest it on your behalf. They'll give you a premium. And if I passed away, it would go to my spouse and my baby essentially. So beneficiaries, in case you pass away, they benefit. Exactly. And I think especially if you have a family, it's a really good plan to have in place um, because life can be unpredictable. Pandemic showed we lost so many great individuals and they were healthy humans, right? Yeah. So it's something that you should think about. Health insurance, again, is a really good um, insurance to have because Mm -hmm. healthcare in in Kenya is very expensive. I think across the globe is expensive. No, it is. But I feel like other governments give you support. Like in London, they have the NHS. All right. Um, We do have the NHIF here. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But again, it's not as well planned and structured Mm -hmm. as other government supports around the world. So I think healthcare is just generally expensive. Get your health insurance. But please be careful. Read the details. What does it include? There's a difference between... In ca- inpatient, outpatient care. Oh, yes. We might have to do another separate to- uh, podcast on, on this. On this one, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of details. Yeah. 
And one last thing about insurance products is never buy a bundle product. So never buy a product that mm-hmm. says, I'm going to cover you for life insurance, okay. but I'm also going to cover you for health care. Uh-huh. The reason being is from my experience and um, what's happened historically in the industry is yeah. that when you com- when you buy a combined product, the way the insurance companies calculate the math behind it, yeah you're actually at a disadvantage because say one thing happens, you need healthcare, right. and then eventually you wanna have a life product. They'll say, oh, you've used up so much premium on your healthcare, we, we're actually gonna give you less than we promised you. So my advice to everybody is keep your insurance products separate. Okay. One good tip is if you're taking out health insurance, do it as a group insurance for families, it's much cheaper. Um, and again, we should probably do a full episode on this. Okay. But uh, the idea is that yes, Insurance needs to go hand in hand. Naturally, if you're driving a car, your car should have car insurance. It just makes sense. Yeah. It's a small cost you pay today, but it secures you for a big event that is likely to happen because yeah, it's quite probable. Yeah, event. Yes. Exactly. Okay. okay. We okay. know we should limit the amount of money we should put in our high risk fund. Yes. Ain't no thing like get rich quick. Life is full of hard work. The moment you accept that and you start working hard, things will happen for you. Okay. Um, and then, so the key thing that I'd like to focus on is, is investing for the long term. Okay. And so the way I would recommend doing this is very much, again, going back to your financial goals and saying, okay, I'll pick one. All right. And what the long term investment portfolio does is that you're investing disciplinedly every single month. Mm-hmm. And you're investing responsibly. Did so you just invent a word in English? Now? I think I did. <laughs> Don't say I'm not funny, right? I'm actually hilarious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> English is our friend. <laughs> English is our friend. <laughs> Exactly. So let's focus on the long-term portfolio. The key thing is in the name. It's okay. long-term. And if anyone tells you, you know, invest here, you're going to get 25%, you're going to get 40%. That's a lie. It's a scam. So be aware. Uh, But what does long term mean? Long term means we're making a plan, we're being disciplined, we're investing every single month. Okay. And we're doing it responsibly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people on the streets who want to get into investment don't understand that investment has to be done responsibly. And yes, there's sports betting and you can earn, you know, X and they lure you in with all these high odds that you can make this much. But that's not investing. That's not investing. That's gambling. And there's a clear difference between investing and gambling. And what I'd like to focus on today is how do we invest responsibly for the long term and how do you go about doing it? And that's why actually Dovu was created, because what I found and and so did you when we were building the company is that all these young individuals are taking their hard earned money and think they're investing, but actually are gambling. Right, yes. And as a result of them, they're worse off when they first started and it leaves a bitter taste in their mouth. And then, oh, we're not investing because we just didn't know how to do it correctly the first time. Yeah. So long-term investing really is about how do you reduce your risk? And the way you do that is not by stock picking, which is buying individual Safaricom shares. That's for your opportunistic portfolio, the high risk one. Right. We're going to invest in an entire sector. And there's a saying that says, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I actually don't know who said that, um, but it's just something I learned through osmosis when I was growing up. It was was a farmer in uh, rural Anglesey. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I could get his name, but yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. are you being serious or are you being sarcastic? No, I'm just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sarcasm galo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the idea is that, okay, we know that putting all your eggs in one basket is risky. So let's yeah. take an example. Um, we all uh, use Microsoft. Um, so Ro went out there one day, was like, I'm going to buy Microsoft. And you put all your savings in Microsoft. Right. Um, and then at the point that you needed your money, Microsoft had unfortunately been fined by one of the regulators because they released information they weren't meant to yeah and the share price went tanks went down yeah but at that point as an individual investor you needed that money yes so you actually are getting less for your money because the price has come down mm-hmm. you and i don't have the skill set as an everyday investor to really figure out what's happening with that particular company yes the information we hear is public uh-huh. So you don't have an advantage. Like yeah. the things we hear on news, you might have a feeling, yeah. but you don't really have information. You hear it at the same time as everyone else. Exactly. Yes. So that information is not really going to add you the extra edge you need to actually make money. Correct. So we say, and my philosophy is that, let's look at the long term. Okay. Do we think technology as a sector where you'd see Microsoft mm-hmm. uh, fit in yeah. is going to be around or grow? 
Okay. And the way you make that decision, you can you you ask yourself, okay, do I think micro? Do I think technology? So these are companies like Apple, Tesla, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Google, and the works. Right. Do we think they're going to continuously grow? Okay. And the way you make that decision is that the reality is that people are now moving from one income bracket to another income bracket. Okay. So the low income are because the tech and the online internet are able to do more jobs. So they're they're educating their children, they're becoming smarter. Right. They are then moving into middle income. Okay. And therefore they're consuming more. And of course technology is gonna be a sector that people continue to consume. You could say the same thing for healthcare. Okay. Uh, you can say the same thing for FMCG products. Um, these are things that will continue to be consumed. What's FMCG? Fast moving consumer goods. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. so these are things are like Dove, Nivea, um, Johnson and Johnson create all of these. Okay. Um, okay. You know, toilet paper, uh, just milk. Milk. Um, I yeah. Love milk. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that is fast moving. Okay. And so instead of investing and in putting all your eggs in one Microsoft company, mm -hmm. let's buy the sector. Let's okay. buy tech. Yes. And that's really where uh, the way Dovu was designed is really to give you exposure to each different sector. Um, and also different regions, so China, USA, UK, Kenya. Okay. Um, and the idea is that we're gonna now be responsible in the way we choose our investments and now put um, our savings into the tech fund. Okay. But you might say, Ro, that's so boring. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it's not really exciting, doesn't take the thrill out of it. Let yeah. me tell you, let me, in, let me let you in on a secret. Okay. By investing in a fund, if you were to compare how buying the technology sector and Microsoft has done yes. over the centuries, mm -hmm. buying into a fund has outperformed. So people who invested in funds have yes. made more money right. than individuals who've just held one fund. One company. One, okay. Name, sorry. So buying the pool, this, this fund, which is a pool of many stocks, has done better than picking one stock. Exactly. So that's what you're saying, stock picking is is not what you should do. Yeah, because you don't have the right information, skill set, or time. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's clear. Yeah, so so why are we complicating things? Let's just keep it simple. Our lives are getting busier. Go focus on making more money mm -hmm. rather than figuring out what investments I should be picking. Just put it in a fund. Okay. And you yes. will be earning on average. So historically, over the last five years, uh, if you took a global index, which is basically holding all 500 companies that are listed on a stock exchange in the US, okay. you're earning anywhere from 12 to 15% on the US dollar. I okay. mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. This goes back to a magic number that I love. Whenever you do 15% year on year for five years, you double you your double. portfolio. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Super interesting. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, the point being is let's now focus most of our savings okay. for when we want to achieve those three financial goals that you pick, short term, medium and long term, right. by investing them through funds. And Dovo allows you to do that. Okay. So, here I am. I'm listening to you on this podcast. I'm like, okay, I, I can... I, I hear Radika's voice. I love it. Yeah. Uh, where you. do I access Novo? Like, how, <laughs> how do I get onto this platform to see what you're talking about? Yeah. So um, you can. You we have apps. So Android and iOS, okay. as well as you have a web portal where you can simply sign on, learn more. Our website is fully com comprehensive. We're doing a lot of work around financial literacy. So we don't just want to say, "Here's a tool." use it yeah i actually want you to understand and i'm going to loop this back into why this is important okay so i've just talked to you about okay what are your incoming uh money what is your outgoing money yes uh what are your goals in the future okay. now that you've taken the time out to budget look at what those goals are going to be you now understand how much you need to be saving hopefully you've signed on to dover you've actually used the tool because it's really neat okay you'll say okay from my twenty-five thousand shillings i know that i can put away X, Y, Z to achieve these three goals. But actually you're a little bit short on one of the goals. Okay. So this will make you think and should make you think, All right. how do I make more money? So a lot of us get comfortable about staying in a job. We've been there for seven years. Let me break it to you. Staying at a job never leads to a significant pay rise. They might be upping your salary so-and-so, you know, 5% inflation. But if you sw you jumped jobs, which I know feels terrifying, Yeah. But one thing about humans is that if you're not uncomfortable, you're not learning. 
and always remember feeling uncomfortable means you're growing like that is how i always motivate myself discomfort yes yeah, yeah i yeah, motivate yeah. myself to do different things like i've picked mm. up golf recently um you know i want to um i'm learning how to do baby led weaning which a lot of people you know moms are like oh i'll just take the easier way but i'm like no let me take the time out it's going to be difficult right. but it's uncomfortable and mm-hmm. so that means you're going to continue to excel So what this exercise should help you do is say okay if I'm not making enough money right what do I need to do okay is there some some good examples are uh taking a short course online on social media management okay. and you still have your day job but on in on the weekends you help three small businesses run their digital marketing okay Right? right okay yeah. um you know you could be like my my gym trainer a dog tra- a trainer as well so not only does he train humans he trains yeah, dogs go to the pet site all right yeah diversification <laughs> if you dog. breathe i will train you i yeah. will train you so yeah. you know it's about the financial plan it really is about understanding what money can do for you what is your relationship to money right because that will drive everyday decision making in your day to day. Like for example, Ra, I know you quit drinking, which I'm really proud of. Thank you, um, thank you. But for example, if you're a lad and you like to go out to see sports and you know you want to be out drinking Friday, Saturday, Sunday, why don't you do it twice a weekend or once a weekend? Yeah. Go to the gym, start, you know, you look better, you might even find yourself a beautiful lady or whatever you prefer. But you know, the idea is that it has a positive impact in your entire life. Yes. And that's why understanding money, how you can manage it. how you can make it grow means that you'll be a much better human at the end of it. Wow. wow. I know. Profound. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> I that was just wise. <laughs> We've touched on the income. We were quite clear there's a your core that you're doing. We we have the side hustles where we are training anything that breathes like like your <laughs> guy. Um we've looked at the expenses, all right? Uh, electricity bill again and everything else that comes with it. But I think something we we need to dive into as well as is debt yeah All right yeah. so debt is a tool that was designed mm-hmm. to help people grow their wealth yeah but over the years the messaging has gone a bit confuzzled okay yeah uh, that's a word that i've also invented um but the messaging Webster has Dictionary. got yes. yeah yes. C- uh, you know the messaging has got confused and okay. The way businesses use debt and I want to give this as an example so you should also start thinking about using debt to generate more money rather than to buy things that don't lead to any income. Okay. So historically debt was designed to help businesses borrow money so they can reinvest it into their business with the aim of increasing their revenue. Mm-hmm. If you increase your revenue that means you increase your profits and everything to do with debt is about cash flow management. So let's take a business example. Okay. Um I am running a business and I've taken on debt. Uh I am able to service the debt payment because what happens with the debt there's an interest rate you are paying uh let's say 5% on on the debt that you've borrowed. Right. You need to make sure that your revenue is covering um your debt payment plus your interest and a little bit more so that you're profitable. Okay. And the way businesses are successful is that they're very smart in the way they manage debt so they'll take more debt on if it's cheap. provided they can service it right. and then times when it becomes expensive they draw back down on debt because they have additional money that they can pay down on and debt was ideally designed to let businesses grow expand into new regions scale in products yeah but what has happened is is that debt was then made available to retail investors um and micro loans which are super expensive you're paying 300% annually on some of these mobile loans that you can get yeah. my advice when it comes to debt is listen we all have it because at some point in life we've had something that's happened that was out of our control correct but before saving you need to pay down really expensive debt and when i may when i say really expensive debt anything that is costing you more than 7 to 8% Mm-hmm. is expensive debt. So, for example, uh, Ro, if you had a loan that's charging you 25%, which you probably don't even know. So, first step is going back to saying, okay, how much is this charging me? Yeah, yeah. Um and then saying, okay, so I have three loans that are bad loans and I have two that are with with under 7 to 8%, that's okay. fine. Okay. I'd make a plan to pay those three off before I start investing. Okay. And the reason being is that These loans if they're charging you anywhere from 9 to 25 to 300% like I mentioned yeah. you're not going to make that in investing so actually you're paying out of your pocket so I'd rather you pay those off first create a plan for that 
and then move on towards uh, investing and creating your portfolio. But the order mm. of events would very much be understand your expenses. Yeah. Try and cut back on your expenses so you can pay off these really expensive debt if you've got it. Okay. And then in the whilst you're paying off this debt, you should be building your emergency fund because that goes hand in hand. And with the emergency fund, also think about insurance. So I know it's a lot to think about, but if you break it down and spend some time, it makes a lot of sense. Well, we've had about so we, we focus on debt. Uh, very good background on, on the way it was initially designed to help businesses. Now it's crept into the retail side. Uh, governments will also borrow money. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll not delve too much into that though. But something from government is all I hear about debt consolidation all yes. the time. All right. So they are borrowing from all places. They consolidate the debt, then they reorganize. All right. They're like it's expensive from since you're borrowing from uh, company X or country Y. All yes. Right. They reorganize it. Is that possible at the individual level? It really is. Um, so. What row means by reorganization simply means, let's take an example, you've got three loans. One loan is costing you um, 25% an annum. Yeah. The other two loans, um, one is costing you 10% and the other one's costing you 7%. So as you see in terms of the most costly, the one that's charging you 25% is really expensive. Yeah. So how do you reorganize it? You can go to the person that you've borrowed from the 7% and say, listen, can I bring my debt that's 25? Well, I wouldn't actually disclose it because yeah. you don't have to, but you yeah. look at the amount that's pending on the 25 and you say, actually, can I borrow another 50,000 shillings from you? Okay. And I would take that money to pay off the 25% eliminate it, and yes. eliminate it because okay. that's really expensive. All right. And then now I'm good. Okay. Um, then you pay down your 7% slowly, slowly. And now you have a, a window of more that you can borrow because the way debt works is that it's capped and whoever's taken out debt knows this. It's capped at your, you know, how much you're showing in terms of assets, um, yeah. you know, how much you have in your Mpesa wallet, et cetera. Right. But as you bring down the 7% debt, you then tackle and reorganize the 10% debt. Okay. And so that yeah. way, yes, you still have debt, but it's at a much cheaper, um, much cheaper uh, price. Right. What it blows my mind is that in the UK, you know, I spend a lot of time there, you get credit cards that are 0% for two years. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, right? So like when your your 0% is finishing and they're gonna charge you 21%, you simply reorganize your debt yeah. and you move to another credit card. So you say, <laughs> okay, you know, that's how people manage their debt. Like that's the UK a UK equivalent of our mobile loans here. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. All right. So the idea is that you just need to be smart. You need to make calendar reminders that, oh, this is gonna be charging me full. Yeah. Yes, get uh, out of that card now. Now, yeah. yeah, whatever the loan is, like you just need to be yeah. smart and organized. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. Uh, thank you for your interesting insight, uh, Radhika. It's it, it's been a journey from uh, talking about electricity bills <laughs> <laughs> to talking about zero zero percent uh, debt debt in the UK, and I think this is super insightful uh, for for many of our listeners. Uh, Thank you, everybody. This was the elephant in the room. Uh, check in next week for another session where we'll be talking about everything money. Signing out, I'm your host, Ronyan Gary. And I'm Radhika, the Super Striker. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>